Welcome to CEO.ca, the leading community for investors in junior resource and venture stocks. My name is Amrit Gill, and today we're joined by Lon Shaver, president of Silver Court Metals. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. What are you looking forward to at this year's PDAC? Well, I think it's catching up with uh, different different parties in the industry that we know, investors, people on the sell side, other companies that we might be interested in. Because as we'll talk about, we've got a growth strategy that has us looking at new opportunities as well. Yeah. Well, let's get right into it. Let's start with the elevator pitch for the company. Sure. Well, I think uh, thinking about Silvercorp, uh, is, uh, there's three key messages to take away. Uh, one, we're a silver producer with a long track record of profitable operations. So, so that's a key thing. There's lots of people who talk the talk, but you definitely walk the walk in terms of producing and making money at it. Uh, secondly, we have a growth strategy that we're positioned to uh, to uh, execute on, and there's a few different elements to that. And uh, and then lastly, when it comes to uh, the company, uh, we're trading at a compelling valuation, which really represents for investors an, an ideal time to jump on board on board the story. All right, and we want you to share some of the key projects and what uh, retail investors should take note of. Well, I think the uh, the, the key project. Uh, to, uh, to think about when looking at Silvercorp is our Ying Mining District. So that's a, a collection of seven mines and two milling facilities that we've been operating uh, since 2006 in uh, Henan Province in China. And it's really been, been the engine for growth and de- delivered a lot of returns for us as a company and our shareholders. So that's really the main operating asset. Uh, we also have an investment portfolio of companies that were uh, incubating uh, key opportunities in the mining space and the largest uh, one there is a position we have in a uh, junior developer in Bolivia called New Pacific. Um, and uh, those would be sort of the, the main assets. And the other, the other thing to consider is that we have uh, 200 million U.S. in cash in the bank and no debt. And so that's really what we're looking to deploy to, to grow as a company. What is your relationship with Orcorp? Well, Orcorp is a, uh, an ASX-listed company uh, that has a great gold project in Tanzania called Nyanzaga. And uh, we signed a deal, a friendly deal, to acquire them in August. And as we were approaching their shareholder meeting, a competitor popped up and bought a big block of stock and wanted to inf- interfere with that acquisition. So we've had to shift strategy and move to a takeover bid, which is currently open. And uh, just like our first deal with Oil Corp that was supported by the board, so is our takeover bid. And we're viewed as the recommended offer uh, for uh, that acquisition. And um, we'll see what happens here in the next couple of weeks as our uh, offer is uh, slated to close on March 22nd. Well, on that note, as we look ahead to the rest of the year, what are some key um, catalysts that you've identified? Well, obviously, whether or not uh, we're successful in uh, acquiring Orcorp will be a key catalyst because it will be uh, addition of a, a great new growth project to the company. Uh, but on the other hand, looking at our, our other assets, uh, Ying, we're going to come out with some uh, news uh, later this spring, early summer, uh, really updating the reserves of resources at that mine and also putting out a uh, life of mine projection for the mining uh, where we're having some changes and some growth. Uh, also in processing, we're going to increase our mill capacity. So we think that'll be an exciting time for people to take another look at Ying. And um, uh, other catalysts for this year tie into that investment in New Pacific, where they're working on two technical studies and uh, working on permitting of their lead project. So those could be some interesting catalysts for us. Uh, Who are some comparable companies and what differentiates you from the competitors? Well, I'd say the uh, the main comparables are the silver companies that uh, that the market's looking at, uh, companies like Pan American, Hecla, Core, First Majestic, uh, Fortuna, Endeavor Silver, uh, increasingly, companies like Aya and Silvercrest. And I guess what um, what we have is, as I said, that long track record of profitable operation. And from a valuation multiple standpoint, we're um, we're valued much more attractively from an investment standpoint. China as a mining jurisdiction, walk us through some of the operational opportunities there um, and risks involved as well. Yeah, China is a, a bit unconventional. There's only a, a couple of the companies that have had, the Western companies that have had, had operations in China. Uh, we've proven with our with our 18-year track record to be successful uh, operating there. And, you know, investors look at China and have no problem investing in other companies uh, with uh, manufacturing capacity, iPhones, EVs, you know, other uh, other consumer products. Uh, but I guess they're, they're just not as accustomed 
to a Western mining company operating uh, mines there. But really, the uh, the legislation has been very stable. Uh, we've been able to uh, build and grow the company, uh, repatriate dividends. So it's actually been quite a good jurisdiction for us to operate. And what is your outlook on silver? Well, I think uh, silver's got a lot of promise because when you look at the alternative power generation technologies, uh, I think uh, solar power is is really the one to to uh, to watch. Uh, there's been a massive growth in installed capacity, and that is just expected to grow further. And all of those uh, solar panels take uh, a bit of silver, and so um, the uh, the supply demand fundamentals for silver uh, should remain strong in part because of that. And to summarize, what would you like to leave our viewers at CEO.ca with? Well, I just think that uh, Silver Corp, it's, it's an opportune time to look at adding Silver Corp to your uh, portfolio, uh, given those uh, dynamics I mentioned in terms of the valuation, growth strategy, and the ability to participate in the silver market with a company that's actually making money. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you.